welcome, whoever you are. Happy New Year. The month of January is named after the Roman god Janus, who is the god of thresholds and doorways. He is often depicted as having two faces, and one looking backward to the old year, and the other looking forward to the new, or one looking inward toward the interior of the building, and the other looking outward. It is an appropriate time to consider hospitality and welcoming. The Sufi poet Rumi says in the hymn we just sang, Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, get again, come. Last year at this time, Joan McDonald, our director of religious education, preached a sermon on radical hospitality. I didn't hear that sermon, but I know that radical hospitality is an idea that touches our deepest religious values. The first principle, the inherent worth and dignity of every person, is just a phrase, just nice words on paper, until it is put into action in our church lives and in our other lives by our being open and welcoming to people of all stripes. There is a particular poignancy to the fact that Joan preached that sermon on that topic a year ago, and it gives us a benchmark by which to measure the changes wrought by the past year at our meeting house. Joan left us in the summer to devote more time to the care of her father, and because her other job became more demanding. She was a faithful caregiver, and her father died of Alzheimer's a few days ago, as I told you. I'm sure Joan would appreciate some cards of support from us. Joan's departure coincided financially with the time of retrenchment, and so it was not possible to replace her as a staff person. She was a member of this covenanted community. She shared the road of life with us, and now she has moved on, as others of us have. And since then, through the leadership of Naomi Turner, the volunteer arts-based effort called Beacon Youth Outreach has become the youth ministry of this meeting house. But these fine kids and their parents who graced our sanctuary two weeks ago came in as strangers to this meeting house. The membership committee and I have done what we can to extend to them the hand of welcome, but we will need support from everyone here. Hospitality has a strong relation to growth in a church, but that is not the reason to practice it. We practice hospitality because it is a core concept of our religion. It is how we live our faith. In Christian teaching, Jesus maintained that how his followers treated the least and most vulnerable of people was how they were treating him. At one point, he envisions a judgment day when he will reward the righteous for taking care of him. As a universalist, I have a lot of problems with the idea of a judgment day. But I think that the ethic that Jesus is preaching here is one that applies to all of us. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, who was it that we saw you hungry? and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. For a theist, this is the theological root of our first principle. We affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of every person because every person has the divine in him or her. And for non-theists, the words inherent worth and dignity convey a similar ethic. In the epistle to the Hebrews, which was traditionally attributed to St. Paul, we find the following. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels unawares. Now, it's not necessarily that we 
redeem angels as supernatural beings. The Greek word in the passage is agalo, which simply means messenger. Any messenger from any person. But I think the point of the passage is that indeed any person we entertain might be a messenger from God. In the Jewish tradition, the essence of mitzvah is to do a favor for someone that can never be repaid. The paradigm example of this is seen in Jewish funerals, where the mourners each put a shovel full of dirt on the coffin. Thus, the mourners participate in making sure that the deceased is properly buried according to law and custom, a favor the deceased can never repay. When we bestow benefits which cannot be repaid, we are operating out of pure and disinterested goodwill. That's the essence of virtue. One of the areas of life in which people have honed their hospitality skills is that of the pilgrimage. The cockle shell on the cover of the order of service is a symbol of the pilgrimage made by thousands each year to the Santiago de Compostela in northeastern Spain, go flesh of Spain, where legend says the relics of St. James, the brother of Jesus, are interred. Over the centuries, whole villages devoted to hospitality has sprung up along the routes of this pilgrimage. And the iconic food served to the traveler is coquille saint Jacques, the cockle of St. James. I think we call it a scallop. We're all called pilgrims on the journey of discovery. We will find many similarities and, of course, wide differences among us. Pilgrims have always come together and found that they had what they had in common and what were the differences. We join a coveted community as this. We agree we will share the road a while. Hospitality, of course, has its risks. The guests may make off with the silverware. They may trash the place. They may insult the host or trample all over local sensibilities. But nobody said every angel was going to behave always like an angel. <laughs> Ruby deals with this in another poem called The Guest House. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some of your life, the dark thought, the sham, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from the beyond. Come, come, whoever you are. To be true to our religious principle, we must open ourselves not only to the one who is like us, but especially and most especially to the one who is different. The point I want to underscore here is that hospitality often involves making yourself uncomfortable. I was standing out on that porch a few minutes ago, and I realized I was cold, because my new haircut tends to make me a little shat <laughs> out of it, on the top. But I said to myself, well, I'm out of my comfort zone, but I'm trying to be hospitable by standing out in front of the church to welcome people in. To reach out to someone who is very different from yourself, is not easy. It is the ability to reach out to the different other that distinguishes the covenanted community 